Coming at you live from outside of space and time. I'm Naeem. Welcome to the feedback loop. It's been a while since I've made a video. I've just been really busy, um, you know, working, uh, doing a lot of work for Future Forecasting Group. Uh, you can check that out at futureforecastinggroup.com. But uh, today's video, I just wanted to give a little update on some upcoming learning opportunities uh, associated with remote viewing. Um, over the past, you know, what, almost 10 years now, uh, on my YouTube channel, you know, I've been sharing my remote viewing work and I've had many people ask me, you know, how do you do that? Where can, where can I learn, uh, remote viewing? So, uh, I'm happy to announce I'll be teaching a instructional course in remote viewing through Future Forecasting Group. Uh, we'll be teaching the HRVG methodology. Um, so let me hop over to the website. You could see more details about this at futureforecasters.com. This is where uh, we'll be taking bookings for the remote viewing course. Uh, it will start on April 7th is the first class. It will be 10 weeks in duration. Uh, it'll end on June 16th, so 10 weeks, 6 lessons over Zoom. Um, if you miss a class, there will be recordings available so you can, you know, see anything you've missed. Uh, there'll be homework assignments in between each lesson to help you kind of implement the different protocols that you'll be learning. So... Uh, yeah, here's the schedule. Um, you know, the first lesson will be visits. This is like a visual ideogram, something I've talked about a few times and shown here on the channel. I'll just hop over to the syllabus here to give a little more detail on the kind of things you'll be learning. So the first first lesson you'll be learning visual ideograms. This is uh, how to make initial contact with the target. You'll learn to develop a space in the visual field that we call Blackboard. This is where we perceive visual imagery uh, associated with the target. You probably see me, you know, work sessions uh, on video here where I close my eyes and get target information. Uh, this is through a technique we call Blackboard. So in the first week, you'll be learning how to develop this space called Blackboard through the use of a visual ideogram. Uh, you'll also be learning how to execute and probe spontaneous ideograms to determine information density and gestaltic information about a target. Lesson two will be something we call the Playfair data collection matrix. And this is where uh, a lot of low level data is collected and associated together uh, in an organized fashion. Uh, you'll learn how to probe spontaneous ideograms and collect and associate low-level sensory information, visual, auditory, olfactory, temperature, and texture impressions. Uh, you'll learn how to diarize uh, your, your session work, to write a little summary. This is something that you would give to a client or something you read at the end of your session to bring all your thoughts together. Lesson three, you'll be learning uh, the Nemo Playfair. This is a, a little icon <laughs> that probably is something that I get the most questions about. You know, what's the little face icon that looks like a little Spider-Man uh, logo? Uh, this is called Nemo, and this is a powerful probing tool uh, used to mirror your subconscious mind and uh, recall information from the target site. So in, in lesson three, you'll be learning how to recall uh, information from the target site using uh, the Nemo probing icon. Uh, and you'll be learning a site sketch. This is where we bring all of our data together on a single page to consolidate it. Uh, and from there, we move on to S4. So in S4, uh, which is Cascade, this is where we investigate each gestalt and uh, each gestalt 
gets what's called a blackboard rush. This is where we take, let's say, a land aspect and uh, we close our eyes and we look on blackboard and then we attain a visual for the for the gestalt and interrogate it for further information uh, using the Nemo icon. Uh, you'll also be learning timeline, how to determine the timeline of a target. Um, this is really the one of the most powerful parts of HRVG methodology, in my opinion, when you get to stage four, S4, uh, doing your blackboard rushes. Um, lesson five, you'll be learning edging. This is a, a breathing technique that we use to uh, bring about a condition where you can have a more experiential uh, moment in your remote viewing. Usually, I get a rush of visuals during edging. And uh, lesson six will be a review and a recap of you know all the things you've learned, uh, feedback for different homework assignments, and uh, you know your graduation or course completion. So this is a really special and uh, unique. Um, methodology in remote viewing that is not really easily available in the public sector and it really has changed the way I, I work it's brought the resolution of my data through the roof you know if you've been following me uh, on YouTube you could see how my work has progressed over the years and a great deal of it is due to my study and practice of the HRVG methodology so yeah, um, if you're interested in learning this form of remote viewing, uh, check out the link in the description or go over to futureforecasters.com and uh, you can make a booking there on the website for the course that starts uh, in early April. And uh, another event uh, lecture that I'm doing uh, this will be happening July 13th, 2024. This is in collaboration with IRVA, the International Remote Viewing Association. I'll be doing a talk on drawings and art, thinking and images. This is a, a lecture designed to help uh, remote viewers get more in touch with their artistic uh, side of their, of their um, perception in order to more accurately depict uh, target information in their drawings and sketches. So some of the topics covered will be human senses, sensors and receptors, you know, our dominant sense, left and right hemisphere processing abilities and methods. Uh, we'll be looking at split brain studies, agnosia and blind sight, brain wave states, the seat of intuition, um, societal programming and, and the effects that it has on our artistic development, the stages of artistic development from infancy to adulthood, the importance of realism uh, in remote viewing, you know, why is it important uh, to try and strive for more realistic drawings in remote viewing, uh, developing the eye and the mind of an artist, uh, thinking in images, perceiving vi visual images in a remote viewing session. Uh, different, you know, we'll be discussing different exercises and tools that you can use to, to help uh, cultivate these skills and a bunch of different resources and recommended readings that can help you on your way. So if you want to see more about that, uh, I'll put the link in the description. That's at irva.org through the Irva Ed program. So yeah, uh, hopefully that was interesting. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, check out you know the work over at futureforecastinggroup.com if you're interested in seeing uh, remote viewing kind of applied. Um, and yeah, looking forward to any of y'all that are interested in learning how to do remote viewing uh, at a high level. So peace and love y'all. Thanks for watching.